Hey guys, so now that we've seen how rotational position and displacement relate to linear position displacement, we're going to look into velocity and acceleration. Let's check it out. So the rotational equivalents of linear velocity and linear acceleration are rotational velocity and rotational acceleration, or angular velocity and angular acceleration. Similar to how x becomes theta and delta x becomes delta theta in rotation, v and a will take different letters as well. Average velocity, if you remember, is simply delta x over delta t, and the units are meters per second. Average acceleration, or I should say acceleration, is delta v over delta t. So velocity, change in velocity over change in time, and it's measured in meters per second squared. That's if you are dealing with linear problems. Now if you have rotational problems, angular motion problems, instead of v, we're going to use omega. Omega. Now omega is a Greek w, so it's like a curly w. It's essentially a w. Um, now instead of delta x over delta t, remember instead of delta x, we now have delta theta. So omega is delta theta over delta t. V is how quickly I can get from here to here. It's a measurement of how quickly I move uh, between two points. Omega is a direction, is a measurement of how quickly you spin in a circle. Okay. Um, remember also that this was in meters, and then this is in radians. So instead of meters, you have radians. So instead of meters per second, you're going to have radians per second. Okay, and the acceleration is very similar. Instead of a, we're going to have alpha, which is uh, a Greek a. And same thing here, acceleration is velocity over time. Acceleration will be angular or rotational velocity over time. So it's delta omega over delta t. And it's radians per second squared. So you might start to see a pattern. The variables are x or delta x and then v and w, I'm sorry, v and a, and they become theta, w, and alpha. And the pattern is that English letters are representing linear motion and Greek letters are representing angular or rotational motion. Okay? These are all Greek letters, theta, omega, and alpha. All right. So w, omega, is a way to indicate how quickly something spins. Well, there are actually three additional variables that will help us describe how something moves. And they're related to w. In fact, they're all related to each other. So you might remember I showed you um, right here, we just did w uh, is delta theta over delta t. And you might remember that we talked about if you have a complete revolution, then your delta theta is 2 pi. Well, the entire angle for a complete revolution is 2 pi. Now, the time that it takes for a full cycle, the time for a full cycle is called period. Period. T. T is period. So, one way that you can rewrite omega is not just delta theta over delta t, but also delta, I'm sorry, also 2 pi over t. And remember also that period and frequency are inverse of each other. Okay, so instead of 2 pi over t, I could also write this as 2 pi f. Okay, so you have omega is a measurement of how quickly something spins. Period is a measurement of how quickly something spins. And frequency is also a measure of how quickly you spin. And they're all related by this equation. Okay, last one we're going to talk about is RPM. Now, RPM stands for revolutions per minute, so one RPM is one revolution per minute. A hertz, which is a unit of frequency, okay, frequency is measured in hertz, is one revolution per second. So you can see how these two are related. So for example, if I tell you something spins with 120 RPM, or at a rate of 120 RPM, um, RPM is simply 120 revolutions per minute and what I can do is I can say I can put a minute up here and convert this into seconds by dividing by 60. One minute equals 60 seconds. I can do this 
And look what I end up with. 120 um, divided by 60 is 2. So I end up with 2 revolutions per second. Revolutions per second is frequency. Okay? Revolutions per second right here is frequency. So if you have RPM, you can convert to frequency by dividing by 60. Okay? So I'm going to quickly write another equation here, which is that frequency is RPM over 60. Now we have a way to connect all of these guys. Okay? W, T, F, and RPM are all connected. Okay? Typically what you're going to do is we're going to convert from any of these three, big T, F, or RPM, back into omega using um, these equations, okay? And the idea, you'll see more of this later, is most of the equations I give you will have W, but not any of the other letters. And I have a little diagram to connect all of these things. So if you have RPM, you will want to convert it to frequency. And the way you do this is by using F equals RPM over 60. Okay? That's how you go from RPM to frequency. And then from frequency, you can convert into either period using the fact that period is the inverse of frequency, or you can convert into omega using the fact that omega is 2 pi f, okay? And obviously you can convert backwards in any direction. Um, generally you want to end up here, but you might have to go from let's say w to rpm. We'll do some of this stuff. All right, cool. So these are the four units that tell you how quickly something spins and you may have to convert um, among them. Trying to highlight this. There you go. All right, one last point before I do an example, and I've mentioned this uh, briefly before, um, rotational equations, which is what I'm showing you a few already by now, um, they work for two different situations. One is when you have a point mass. A point mass is a tiny object of negligible size that spins around a circular path. We call it a point mass because we just represented it by a point. It has no volume. Okay? I'm going to say that the radius of this object is zero. Imagine a, a sphere with a radius of zero. It has no radius. It has no volume. Okay, radius is zero. You could also write if you want volume equals zero. I'm going to actually write out volume so I don't think it's velocity. It's a point. It could be a small object that we simplified down to a point. So that's point mass. The other one is when you have a rigid body, which is something where the radius is not zero. The radius is greater than zero. So it has volume. Has volume. Okay. And I refer to this as either a rigid body, um, that's sort of the classic textbook name, or a shape. The reason why I like to think of it as a shape is because in these problems, usually you will be told what the shape is. So if I tell you you have a small object that's a point mass, and if I tell you you have a cylinder, um, usually I'll tell you that it's what the radius is, um, and then you treat that a little bit separately. Okay? So you can either have a point mass, I'm going to draw a tiny little m going around a circle, and the circle has a radius r. In this case, little r is the distance from the circle to the edge of the circle, and you're going around at the edge. Um, and r is the radius of the circle, and then little r is how far you are from the center. Those are the same thing. Or you can have like a cylinder, for example, spinning around itself. So let me draw like a little cylinder here. Um, looks like a cake and a cylinder that rotates around itself. And that cylinder has a radius of r, okay? So you can have either one of these two situations. We'll look at both a lot. Cool. So that's a quick intro. Gave you some equations, uh, how to connect things together uh, between these four different variables. And we're now going to do a problem. So I have a 30 kilogram disc. So mass equals 30. Um, radius 2. So let's draw a disc. Uh, it's just a circle. The radius is 2. This is a disc. It's a rigid body or a shape. The radius of this thing is 2. And it rotates at a constant 120 RPM. So I'm going to write here that RPM equals 120. And we want to know its period and angular speed. 
So for part A, I want to know what is big T. And then for part B, I want to know what is omega. Omega, which is W, angular speed. Same thing as angular velocity, same thing as rotational velocity or rotational speed. Cool. So how do we tie together? Well, if you look at this little diagram here, we can convert from one to the other. I'm going to convert RPM into frequency, and then I'm going to convert from frequency into period and into W. Okay? So first we're going to go frequency equals RPM over 60. So it's 120 divided by 60. Two, the units are hertz. Uh, but I don't actually want frequency, I want period. So period will be 1 over the frequency, 1 over 2.5. Period is measured in seconds. Now to find angular speed, W, I just use that W is 2 pi over T, or I can use that W is 2 pi F. I'm going to use 2 pi F uh, because it's more straightforward. 2 pi frequency is 2, so I get 4 pi. And if you multiply all of this, the answer is 12.6 radians per second. Okay, so that's it for this one. Let's do the next one.